Hello everyone, Ed here with the Mandatory Cinema Daily Review. Today we are covering Shoplifters, a Japanese film written and directed by Hirokazu Koreeda. It is available on Hulu. This is the heartwarming tale about a group of petty criminals who choose to live together as a family. One day they run into a neglected and abused little girl who was unwanted by her own parents and they decide to take her in, which is legally kidnapping. If the synopsis isn't a big enough hint, the main theme that this movie deals with is morality, mainly all the shades of gray between good and bad. At its core, the movie plays like a heartwarming drama of a group of outcasts trying to get by between the cracks of society. But who are these people? Why are they outcasted? Why do these grown adults pretend to be related to each other? The answers to these questions are as heartbreaking as they are surprising. You may start off the film loving these characters, but by the end, you just can't look at them the same way. It is, it is as devastating as it is when it happens in real life. When your own family members let you down or when you learn something about them that was supposed to be a secret. But before things get devastating, watching these characters be there for each other creates an intimate and warm atmosphere that puts you in a place of passivity as an audience, just as the characters in this movie are. All throughout the first half of the movie, we see hints that things aren't really as they seem. The inner darkness of these characters peek out every now and then, but just as we do for our own loved ones, we look past them to enjoy the little moments. The movie has an interesting pace and structure to it. The first act is really short, the second act is also short, and instead of having a traditional build-up, med point, and a reconstructive period to the third act, once the midpoint hits, we are very, very quickly in the long third act of this movie. Now, normally, I don't like third acts. They really shouldn't work because by the time you are in act three, you don't want to push your audience's patience by introducing a lot of new elements or information. But in the third act, that's where the mystery unravels completely. The film presents these revelations in medium shots as our characters are questions about their actions and their history. Yet we never see who is questioning them in these scenes. Morality is a socially enforced phenomenon. Society creates a list of acceptable and unacceptable acts and the morality behind that reason is absolute and unquestioned. By framing the shots this way, with having the actors looking directly into the camera, we are the moralistic society who is judging these characters, but we just spent the last hours getting to know them, getting to see how they affect each other as this unofficial family unit, and some of the things we hear, again, is messed up, but does that make them bad people? The movie offers no easy answers. All I know is that in the final moments of this movie, I was left very uneasy, unsure, and most importantly, I just wish things were as nice for these characters as it was at the beginning of the movie, even though I don't necessarily disagree with the way things played out. Hirokazu Koreeda crafts a film with a tangible sense of place. Our characters live in this incomprehensible house. It isn't messy, but it has a lot of stuff everywhere from all the stuff that they've stolen. All the windows are covered up. I don't think I saw anything that I could describe as a door once. This house is as much a collection of random messy things put together as the family is at the heart of this movie. The rest of the world is clean and clinical and the sense of alienation all our characters feel is palpable, making the sense of community they feel at home all that harder to let go of. This is a strong recommend for me. It feels like you're really stepping into a situation here. And the movie drives this point in a very powerful way by the way that it frames this third act. Long after the movie ended, I was wrestling within myself exactly how I felt about these characters. But ultimately, I'm glad that I went on this journey with them. And that is today's Mandatory Cinema Daily Review. And a little bit of sad news to talk about with this episode. My regular co-hosts for all my shows, Angelina, has had to take a bit of a hiatus from all the shows in order to focus on uh, personal issues. Uh, she'll be back some other day, but until then, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with all these shows. Play Me A Story is still going to go on uh, fine, uh, as it always has been. We're still covering Spider-Man. Expect an episode for that next week. Mandatory Cinema... I might just have to have like a temporary host come on. And then with the uh, arts and craft beer, that's going to be a little tougher to figure out. But stay tuned to our channel. These will resolve themselves. And having said all that, thank you for listening. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, comment what you said below. Hit that little blue bell button. Uh, tell your mama you love her unless you don't. I've been Ed. You've been awesome. Have a good day.